and welcome to AMC Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is the daily show where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus a little bit of insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is AMC Movie News Editor-in-Chief, John Campia. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie-related show on the planet Earth, coming to you live from right here in Hollywood at the Stream.TV studios, and we are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. Also here, AMC Movie News Senior Editor, Amy Rose Eisenbach. Hello, guys. Nice to be back. And if anyone knows who controls the weather, I'd really <laughs> like to turn it down a notch. Hundreds are way too hot for me. Thanks. And also at the table, writer-director, John Schnepp. Yeah, it was 104 degrees. Oh. It's a... Let's talk about the weather, guys. <laughs> weather wizard. It's <laughs> it's September. Yeah. Uh, it's I'm driving. Uh, 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 the, my driver's to bring me here today, and he's like, it's 10:30 in the morning, and he turns up and says, it's 103 degrees outside. Uh, I'm like, I gotta move back to Canada, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, just, I can't take this much longer. Yeah. Hey, listen, guys. Um, as happens sometimes, a news story broke uh, after we finished writing the show notes this morning, and I find this to be a very interesting one. Now. If you'll remember, the big surprise announcement, there weren't a lot of surprises at Comic-Con this year, but the, the big surprise announcement was Legendary Pictures saying they were making another quasi-King Kong movie called Skull Island that revolves around the island where King Kong and lives and dinosaurs live and all that kind of stuff. Well, this morning it came out who is going to star in that movie, and it's Tom Hiddleston. Loki is going to be fighting uh, King Kong, apparently, uh, going there. This is actually... I think terrific news. I think this is a huge uh, bump of, you know, it gives credence to the whole project when you get a star like Tom Hiddleston in there. But also Tom Hiddleston is one of these actors that everybody loves, but he really needs that one big, you know, starring role for him. And I think this could be it. And I'm really excited to see it. Like I said, I think it gives a lot of credibility to the project. I think a lot of the fanboys are going to be very excited about oh, this, yeah. having Loki in there. And I think we're going to see Tom Hiddleston take a, a film, a big scale film, on his back and carry it. I think this is terrific. Amy Rose, we just started talking about this. Actually, I mentioned Amy Rose's story. I gotta tell you this. Because <laughs> I start, sometimes when we find out somebody's coming in the studio, I'll say, so, you know, the Russo brothers are coming in the studio. So, you know, Joss Whedon is coming. So I start off with, so Tom Hiddleston and Amy Rose instantly is like, stop it! <laughs> what are you about to say? But no, he's not coming in the studio. But anyway, your thoughts on him being on Skull Island. Yeah, don't toy with me like that again, <laughs> all right? Um, I think it's fantastic as well. I mean, I love that they're, you know, kind of rebooting these monsters and Godzilla and all of these characters that are fabulous for this new age with the better technology and everything. And I, I love everything coming out of Legendary right now. Um, but Tom Hiddleston, I mean, he did star in Only Lovers Left Alive. Yes. Uh, with Tilda Swinton, and it was a really interesting take on vampires, and I personally loved it. It was very tonally weird and cool, and I loved it. Um, and Loki, I mean, even though he's a supporting character, he steals every oh, scene yeah. he's in. So I do think this is a really smart move. It's also so different from the other projects. He's going to be in that country western biopic, hopefully. Yes. Um, so I really think he's just carefully crafting his career in a very brilliant way. So I think exactly this kind of guy with this kind of charisma is what this franchise could need to bring it to the next level. So I think it's brilliant on all fronts. He's also got that Guillermo del Toro film, uh, Crimson Peak. Yeah, that, too, that so, was so great. Anyway. Shep, what do you think about this? I'm really excited. I mean, he's such an underrated actor because he's an incredible theatrical actor. He's, yeah. has, he's memorized hours and hours and hours of lines and can repeat them. I mean, he's just an incredible actor. Like, he's an actor's actor. So to have him involved in Skull Island, which is going to be ah, like monsters <laughs> smashing, that's going to be exciting to have such a, a great actor involved in a what could be like a cool mixture of Son of Kong. I don't know where they're going, if there's going to be Baby <laughs> Kong, if there's going to be multiple Kongs, Baby you know, this. You know, I just, I love the idea of Skull Island. So when I first heard that, that's so much better than King Kong 2 to me. Yeah. It's just so much better. So I'm excited that they got a great actor. You know, it's funny, you mentioned, like, his pure thespian skills. Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget that. He is a pure thespian. Yeah. I remember I was watching this, uh, like, it was out of Europe, this talk show he was on. I can't remember if it was British or, or whatever, but, and they were just talking about stuff and talking about Shakespeare, and the, the host is like, like, you know Macbeth? He goes, I know everything about Macbeth. I mean, I love Macbeth. So, yeah, just recite some. And he started just running off Macbeth lines for, like, five minutes straight. It's like, yeah. so hot. This dude's for real. Yeah, it's scary how amazing he is. Yeah. He's like, like, he probably recite an entire book. From yeah. beginning to end. Probably. He's no that problem. type of dude. Yeah. When you're sitting with, because you've interviewed him too. Oh, yes. I, um, and when you're sitting with him, number one, he's got not quite as high, but he's got The Rock's charm. 
not quite as much charm as Rob, but he's got the rock's charm. But you also get this feeling that he's the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> yeah, like he's really got that, but he's super friendly Speak and Speak for nice. yourself, John. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, yeah. what's our first official story today? Deadline is reporting that studio sources are telling them that Matt Damon and director Paul Greengrass are returning to the Bourne franchise. According to the report, the new Bourne film will take the July 16, 2016 release date that was being held for a second Jeremy Renner Bourne legacy film to be directed by Justin Lin. That movie would be pushed back to a date yet to be determined. John, if the report is true, what do you think about Damon and Greengrass returning to Bourne? I think there are gonna be a lot of very happy people. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I, was I super thrilled with The Bourne Legacy with Jeremy Renner? No, but I, I thought it was a pretty okay movie. I, I enjoyed it and I thought, this is interesting to see where they go with this. This is kind of a cool separate movie franchise from the other Bourne franchise. I think this is kind of cool. And I was looking forward to the next one and I still am. But even I, who liked that movie, yeah, give me this. Give me Paul Greengrass. Now, this is a total change of heart for Paul Greengrass because he has been on the oh, talk yeah. show circuit for years saying, nope, never doing yeah. another Bourne movie. Once Bourne gets his memory back, there's nowhere left to go, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> and they're doing another one. Now, the only thing that I find a little bit disappointing, and just a little, is that I always thought that if they announced Greengrass and Damon were coming back, I always kind of envisioned they would be mixing in the Jeremy Renner mm -hmm. character with it. But maybe that's what they have plans down the line. I do think it's interesting that they're not just kicking out the Bourne legacy stuff because right. they're still saying they're still going to do that Justin Lin and Jeremy Renner film. So clearly they are creating a cinematic universe right. uh, of their own for the Bourne stuff. But And so could that get messy? Maybe. But just for this thing, Greengrass, Damon, back doing another Bourne film? Sign me up. Yeah, I agree. Um, I did not really enjoy the legacy film, um, I, and it was not Renner's fault because he's a really good action star and he's good at drama and you know he's just he's really good. And Rachel Vice, I mean, come on, she's fabulous. Oh, yeah. But I didn't like her character at all in the film, and I just thought it was a much weaker storyline than the Matt Damon storyline with the memory loss and everything and collecting that. And I just was much more intrigued with this concept. I felt like that was kind of thrown together. It wasn't an awful film, but eh, it was kind of weak compared to the other three, which I thought were much stronger. So this is really exciting to me. Matt Damon, he is also one of those actors that when he's on screen, he lights it up. He's got that charisma that we love so much. Um, and Paul Greengrass, you're right, coming off of Captain Phillips. Um, I do think it is interesting that he, because Damon always said, I won't return unless Greengrass does. Right. Well, looks yep. like it's happening. Right. But I do think it would be a wasted opportunity if they didn't have the two either showdown or work together or whatever they're going to do. So I feel like by pushing the second legacy film, maybe they'll introduce Renner into the uh, the Matt Damon film, and then it will lead off into the next installment of that. That, that would make sense. Schnepp, do you think this could be a situation of the studio going to Greengrass and saying, Let's do a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You've got a passion project you want to do. We'll let you do it if you do another Bourne film. Or do you think this is just him changing his mind? I think that's the e e e. <laughs> He's waking up. Yeah, what's that sound? E e like windows. Dump truck of millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do it. We, it. Gets on the surfboard of money. That's just like. That's I my think, dream right there. Yeah, surfboard I think that's what money. happened to Greengrass. He's like, I'll never. Yes, accept that. Yeah, Swiss <laughs> bank account. Just weird Hummer. Just blow it up for no reason. All right, I'll do it. You know. Um, yeah, I'm super excited because I like the Born Legacy, but it always felt to me like. The ghost of Matt Damon was throughout that entire movie. They kept referencing Bourne. Oh, there that was the weakest of part of the movie to me. But that's what I'm saying. They should have just been like, no, this is a separate, but it was called, called the Bourne Legacy, exactly. so they had to weave him yeah. in there. So I'm really glad that they're coming back. I'm really excited. I love the first three Bourne movies, and I really like Bourne Legacy, and I, I definitely think you're right. They are going to try to weave Renner in there, because now it's part of that. It's part of that. So yeah. I could see Renner doing a cameo or a little bit, and vice versa, Damon coming in for the Justin Lin movie. You know, I yeah, I see maybe that's the back scratching. Hey, help us weave this together and we'll let you do exactly what you want with Matt Damon. Let us continue with Renner. So, you know, maybe that's what's gonna happen. All right, what's next? According to a story in The Hollywood Reporter, actress Leslie Mann is close to joining the upcoming movie Vacation, the next film in the National Lampoon's Vacation series. 
<clears throat> man would be playing the role of Audrey Griswold in the movie The Hangovers. Ed Helms will play an adult Rusty Griswold with Christina Applegate as his wife. Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo return as Rusty and Audrey's parents, reprising their roles from the original films. According to the report, Audrey's character is now married to a TV news anchorman played by Chris Hemsworth. Schneb, what would you think of Leslie Mann joining the cast of Vacation? I, I love it. I love Leslie Mann. She makes me laugh. I mean, I know she's married to Judd Apatow, but she's just a really funny actress. So she usually, any of the roles that she's in, either Knocked Up or a 40-year-old virgin or what was the one that she, they just did? This is 40. Other Woman. Oh, this yeah. is 40. Yeah. yeah. A lot of her parts in that were just really funny. I loved her feeling up Megan Fox. I just yeah. loved That's one of my favorites. Can I? Yeah, that's one of my Why favorite didn't you like scenes. That one? Because women always do that. Let me, let me, let me just, yeah, that's right. Women <laughs> always do that, so it was nice to finally see that in a film. And uh, yeah, so I think that her addition to it is just the, the and then hearing that she's going to be playing the wife of Chris, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth, or Hemsworth playing her husband, so to speak. And that he's going to be a TV anchorman. So now we kind of know what that relationship's going to be. I think it's going to be fun. I know, I know you had mentioned stuff about Ed Helms, but I'm still holding out that this is going to be a fun vacation. So you know, not a lot of people know this, but uh, Schnepp and I do uh, do that off screen quite often. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. We just is do that cool? to each other. Yeah. We do it to each other's yeah, butts. But it's totally cool. Yeah. Um, I'm not even going to comment on that one. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. I love this, and the reason I love this is I have been. I, look, uh, all due respect to Judd Apatow and all, I've been in love with Leslie Mann <laughs> since George of the Jungle. I, I just a little part of me was stole, a little part of my heart was stolen by Leslie Mann when she was in George of the Jungle, and it's belonged to her ever since. I love her. You're right, 40 year old virgin. Who can get on screen with Steve Carell? That whole cast, and she probably delivers the most memorable moments in that mm -hmm. movie. Me, you know, and Ann and almost everybody I know every once in a while on a Saturday morning, what should we eat? And one of us inevitably would say, let's get some effing French toast, and that's, that's <laughs> what we do, right? Um, and even you put her in a, I mean, I didn't think it was all that bad. I know you hated it, but that movie, The Other Woman, there are certainly big weaknesses <laughs> about it. But Leslie Mann, I thought, owned that movie. Every time she's talking, every time she's doing something, to me, the movie was delightful and really good. And you pointed out This is 40. I didn't even like This is 40. But yeah, when she's doing stuff on screen, she's got this magnetism about her that just draws you in. I am pessimistic about a vacation reboot. Not because it's a reboot. I love a lot of things that they're doing, but I'm just not in on Ed Helms. Hmm. Uh, other than, you know, kind of catching lightning in a bottle with the first hangover, I have not been impressed with him. So I want him to prove me wrong. I want this to work. They, Chris Hemsworth getting Christina Applegate as right. his wife, bringing back Chevy and D'Angelo. You seem to be doing everything right. The one thing is the guy they got to be the lead. So I'm hoping I get my mind changed. You're but saying as reboot. It's actually, it is a sequel. But it's like You're right, yeah, yeah, it is a yeah, yeah, kind like, of yeah, restart, yeah. if you will. <laughs> uh, anyway, Amy Rose. Yeah, I love her as well. I think she is just very talented, and she does have that quality about her where she feels like she's just really down to earth as well. And, you know, beyond the Apatow relationship, I mean, she's really talented. I think she she's would have great. a career on her own, you know? Um, I am definitely less skeptical the more casting updates that happen for this because I feel like this ensemble is fantastic yeah. and Chris Hemsworth with uh, married to her in that role that kind of sounds like a James Mars and Anchorman kind of like pompous like fun I, I don't hope know he's a little it douchey. sounds good I, I hope, hope so yeah. too. Yeah. but no I, I feel like this is the, the approach you don't reboot this you make a sequel yeah. I love that the main characters are in it as well and I also didn't really love this is 40 but uh, I thought it was 40 minutes too long that's the usual pun but uh, I did have <laughs> some good character moments in it, but I just thought of the cameo at the end with Jason Siegel, Bodies uh -huh. by Jason. That part was funny with Megan Fox again. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, folks, we reached that part of the show for buy and sell. Here's how this works. In front of her ass, she's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down, and then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Ashley, what do we got? A new poster for the upcoming film Dracula Untold has hit the web. The movie is described like this. Luke Evans transforms from the cursed man history knows as Vlad the Impaler to an all-powerful creature of the night in the new film, which tells the origin story of the alluring immortal we have come to fear as the sun sets, Dracula. Dracula <laughs> Untold opens in AMC theaters on October 10th. Amy Rose, buyers sell the new poster for Dracula Untold. I'm going to buy it. I think it's really badass, and uh, I don't know if the movie's going to be good or not. Um, I've definitely seen elements of the promotional materials that are like, okay, that's cool. It's kind of taking a Batman Begins approach, mm. which I'd be really into because I love that movie, and I think it's cool to show. But, you know, Vlad was a very evil man, and I'll... <laughs> 
be interested to see what happens and how much of that they take and how much they chalk it up to the whole Dracula story. So we'll see. But based on the poster alone, I think that's pretty badass. And his expression is very interesting, um, but I like it. Um. I'm going to sell it. Mm. Um, I, I am actually really looking forward to this movie. I'm looking to see this reimagining of this character and all that kind of stuff. I actually quite like the first poster. Right, with the wings out. Like yeah, that. with the cape out yeah. and the very almost Batman esque. Yeah. But Batman stole it from Dracula, <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> Resteal. This, this to me feels like a, a new DC comic book superhero movie or and a, that's a bad? new Marvel superhero. <laughs> it's just that's not what this movie is, you know? And so. I'm looking forward to the movie, love Luke Evans, can't wait to see it, but I'm not big on, on the poster. I do, however, want to hear Ashley say Dracula again. Yeah, say it, girl. Dracula. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> Schnepp? Uh, just because she did that, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I actually I agree with you. It is very kind of like it's superhero-y. Like the pose yeah, and everything. Yeah, but I kind of like it, even though okay. I, I'm really not sold on the movie yet because the trailer... Whoever's making this film, please cut out any of the I Frankenstein stuff. You know, like, <laughs> it's Dracula, get all that gothic horror elements, and then have some action scenes. Like, the trailer has, like, a bu bats turning into a I giant hate fist. That part. I hate that part. Yeah, I hate that I part, too. Loved I loved oh. it. I thought it was so, really creative. I, just, I liked okay. it before. I'm just that saying, part. like, yeah, I, don't, I mean, we, I get it now. He's going to turn into a bunch of bats, you know. I mean, I think that, you know, the prophecy did that great, you know, but it was crows and it was Vigo Mortensen. But, you know, like, <laughs> You know, like, I'll buy the poster. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, what's next? Reports have emerged that Sony Pictures is looking to reboot their 1997 film, I Know What You Did Last Summer, which starred Sarah Michelle Gellar, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ryan Felipe, and Freddie Prince Jr. as a group of high school students who accidentally hit and kill a man with their car one night and then find themselves on the receiving end of a slasher killer serial rampage one year later. John Byers saw the notion of rebooting I Know What You Did Last Summer. Surprisingly enough, I'm going to buy it. Um, and, and here's why, because... The premise of that film is very cool. A couple of kids accidentally kill somebody. One year later, some weird crap starts to happen. I think that's a pretty cool jumping off point for a movie. Now, did I really like I Know What You Did Last Summer? No. Were the two pathetic sequels that came after it, one to theater, one to straight to home video, any good? No. Uh, which kind of just reinforces my idea that you know what, this concept is good enough, it deserves another shot at it. So, um, and you throw in some cameos by the cast there too. I, actually, I don't know if a couple of them are even talking to each other anymore, but I don't Aww. know if you can do that. But uh, I'm, I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. Um, <laughs> I actually liked the first movie. I thought it was a great concept. I thought they had really good chemistry together. And, you know, while the story isn't crazy fresh because elements of it have been used in different horror films and whatever. I still thought it worked really well. I agree the other two should have not been made. But this film I thought was good and it had good tension and I thought it was really fun. But I don't want to see it remade. As I mentioned, this concept, while it was fresh in this film, it still felt like, you know, pulled different elements. And I don't feel like it's such a unique concept that they can't just twist it a little bit and make another horror movie that's an original concept instead of rebooting it. Because that's the horror concept in general. A lot of them recycle thoughts. And, you know, and I, I love that because it's more about the experience than having this incredible plot all the time. Right. But with this, I just feel like, eh, it's not enough of a gem that you should reboot something like this in my opinion. Shit. I'm gonna say they should reboot it because I know what your boobs did last summer. <laughs> because that's all I could think of when I see that. when I think of these movies, I just think of Jennifer Love Jennifer Love Hewitt and these like super tight, like boob busting little <laughs> outfits. And that's like, and then there was the guy who was like, I'm Captain, I'm Seaman, like from the fish fillets, you know, <laughs> I got a hook. It just reminded me of the Gordon's fisherman. That's Aww. what it was. It was like Gordon's fisherman as the villain. Look, you know what? They're like fun little trashy horror films. They should re... I, 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 I buy it for them to reboot it. I don't know if I'll see it, but <laughs> I just Do think, it. yeah, it's a quick reboot. It's like a fun teen film, and I agree with you. The first one was fun. They like ran over a dude, tried to hide his body. He comes back with a weird semen, like, I'm going to grab you with my hook, you know? Whatever. Creepy. If you want to feel a little bit old, three years, that film's going to be 20 years old. Wow. How's wow. that? Well, that's good time for a reboot. Good time for a reboot. All right, Are what's next? Are you serious? Yeah. 20 years? 20 years and wow. three years from now, yeah. 
Marvel Studios has released the official synopsis for the upcoming Avengers Age of Ultron. The synopsis reads like this. Marvel Studios presents Avengers Age of Ultron, the epic follow-up to the biggest superhero movie of all time. When Tony Stark tries to jumpstart a dormant peacekeeping program, things go awry and Earth's mightiest heroes, including Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, the Incredible Hulk, Black Widow, and Hawkeye are put to the ultimate test as the fate of the planet hangs in the balance. As the villainous Ultron emerges, it is up to the Avengers to stop him from enacting his terrible plans and soon uneasy alliances and unexpected action pave the way for an epic and unique global adventure. Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron stars Robert Downey Jr., who returns as Iron Man, along with Chris Evans as Captain America, Chris Hemsworth as Thor, and Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. Together with Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow and Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye, and with the additional support of Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, and Kobe Smulders as Agent Maria Hill, the team must reassemble to defeat James Spader as Ultron, a terrifying technological villain hell-bent on human extinction. Along the way, they confront two mysterious and powerful newcomers, Wanda Maximoff, played by Elizabeth Olsen, and Peter Maximoff, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, and meet an old friend in a new form when Paul Bettany becomes Vision. Avengers Age of Ultron opens in AMC theaters on May 1st. Schnepp, buy or sell the synopsis for the new movie. That was quite a mouthful of a synopsis. Yeah, right. uh, I buy it. I can't wait to see this movie. I don't know when I'm ever going to get a chance to talk about certain things. I don't know when that's going to, I'm going to, dying. Uh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I know stuff you don't. And I'll, that's all I could say, but holy crap. Yeah, I can't wait. This a great synopsis. Come on now. I, I may have, I might have sent Schnepp somewhere mm. a couple of months ago to I, see something. I can't talk about it! I can't talk about it, so this, <laughs> I love this synopsis because it, it reinforces a lot of the things that we have been speaking for a long time. Tony is obviously going to be at the heart of creating Ultron. We've known that for a long time. I like the whole idea it's he's re, re, getting going an old peacekeeping program. Well, ultimately, we, we know Ultron is like, okay, I'm here to keep peace. And Ultron figures out, well, the only way there's going to be peace is if we wipe out humans. Mm -hmm. And there we go. I do like the way they said that uh, Bettany becomes Vision. So I haven't known if, they, if Vision was just going to be some kind of a, a copy of Jarvis or if he was going to be an evolution of Jarvis. This might suggest he's something of an evolution or a manifestation of Jarvis. And if that's the way they do it, I think it's a bit of a departure from the comic books, obviously, but I think it would be really cool for the cinematic universe. So I'm really excited about this for me to buy. Ultron's motivations sound similar to what Traska's motivations were in X-Men, mm -hmm. you know, getting rid of the mutants for the betterment of mankind. So it's an interesting swap. Um, I, I obviously cannot wait f for this. I'm so excited about this. Um, that was my favorite commentary from you yet. Mm, it was so awesome. <laughs> and I can't wait for you to also share things oh. that we don't know. Um, I was, I'm not gonna lie, hoping for another little tidbit because we put this together already. I'm not learning anything new yeah, from this. Yeah. So I was hoping for a little more, but I mean, it's all the pieces are in line. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be fabulous. And I love, love the addition of the Max Mock Twins. So it's mm. gonna be great. All right, what's next? A brand new poster for the upcoming Christopher Nolan film Interstellar has hit the web. Interstellar chronicles the adventures of a group of explorers who make use of a newly discovered wormhole to surpass the limitations on human space travel and conquer the vast distances involved in an interstellar voyage on a mission to save the human race. Interstellar hits AMC theaters on November 7th. Amy Rose buyers sell this new Interstellar poster. Bye. Give it to me now, Nolan. I want this film. I love everything I've seen for it. We still don't know a ton about it, which I love so much. Matthew McConaughey looks incredible. I am so excited. I want it now. I am going to sell it. No, John. This is, it looks like Matthew McConaughey is looking for Morgan Freeman and the Penguins. Mm. That's uh, cool. I prefer the Cocaine Volcano poster myself right. first. <laughs> like, listen, who cares? This movie is going to, I have no doubt this movie is going to be awesome and I can't wait to see it. But. To me, it's an underwhelming poster for such an exciting movie to be pumped up out. That's just me. You're a tough I, critic today. You know, I do like it, but I was retitling it Cocaine Planet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look at Matthew McConaughey. Look at all the cocaine. That's a lot of rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a giant. All right, folks, we reached our part of the show for Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to bring up, 
Email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Now, if you're watching us live, we're going to save a couple of minutes to take some of your live questions as well. You tweet those into us. Just tweet to us at AMC Movie News. But for now, let's get to the mailbag question. So, Ashley, what's in there? Frank Bono writes, Hey, AMC Movie Talk. Love the show and do not miss a single day for over a year now. My question is regarding Agent Coulson. Don't you think he should be in Avengers 2 or do you think he makes a cameo? How will the Avengers react when they find out he is still alive? Thanks and have a great day. It kind of brings up one of the problems of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with fans, okay? And that is, you know, Iron Man 3 happens. Why wasn't Captain America there? Why? And that's yeah, the thing we always said that when you get into these, uh, these shared cinematic universes, all the fans are always going to say, why isn't everybody there? Why didn't, why didn't uh, War Machine come and help this guy? Why didn't Hawkeye show up here? Why? Because they didn't. Uh, and so shouldn't, should Coulson be there? No, only if it serves the story. But something interesting happened in that horrible, wretched piece of garbage television show, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, and, which, by the way, I, I think Coulson is a great character. I and I think Clark Gregg <laughs> is the man. He's the man. I think he deserves a much better show to be built around him. Other than Ming-Na, everybody else. Did you else... see the last four episodes of it? I, I did. Li I liked I, the last I did four. Not. Bill thought, Paxton? I think like three or four Bill episodes Paxton. towards the end, it started to get good, yeah. and then like the last three episodes just fell to trash again. But even though I like Bill Paxton too. But other than Ming-Na, I, I just don't think anybody in that show's any good. Other than, you know, Clark and her. But anyway, I digress. Mm -hmm. But something, the only reason I might agree with you that maybe he should show up is because something Samuel L. Jackson, who guest starred in, in the show, said. They're talking about this protocol that saved Coulson's life. And Coulson is yelling at him, we were saving that protocol for an Avenger. And Samuel Jackson goes, we did. In intonating that Coulson is an Avenger. That that's pretty much what he said. He said, Samuel Jackson basically laid it out. Agent Coulson is an Avenger. So if you're gonna take that, then I'll agree and say, yeah, he should. From what I've heard, there were no plans for him to be in there. Wow. But I would be surprised if he doesn't at least cameo uh, in there. Remember, Thor knows he's alive because they had Asgardians on the show who went back. I mean, they had Lady Sif show up. She goes, oh, Thor will be happy to hear you know, you're, you're alive. So Thor knows. I'm going to assume the other guys know too. So um, that's the only reason I think he maybe should be. What do you guys think? I think that he is going to show up. I think it's going to be a very deliberate. People love him as Agent Coulson. He's great. They love him. And we always give a standing ovation when he's on the screen. I think it would be a wasted opportunity and I think it's going to be very strategic. I think there's going to be a time where the Avengers are all getting beaten down and they need a resurgence and they need motivation and here comes Agent Coulson would be to awesome. give the day a little more pep in your step and that's how I see it kind of playing out. I feel like it'd be a waste opportunity and I mean remember that really dramatic moment with the Captain America trading cards right. and oh, all of that. I mean it's going to so come great. back. It's going to come back. Yeah and I agree. I'll, I'll say I would hope that if he is in the film there would be a scene with him and Cap or him and Thor, like, son of coal, you, you survived. Or, <laughs> or like Cap could be like, look, I was gone for a long time too. I know what it's like to come back from the dead. You know, there could be some little back and forth thing where they don't make a big deal out of it, you know? I think that would be great to just see him in a, in a scene. So. I, I, I would lose my mind if he yeah. was. I think that'd be great. All right, let's take a couple. Just uh, We got a few minutes left here, so let's take a couple live Twitter questions. Ashley, what have you picked out? Moses Oaks writes, what do you think about a Back to the Future reboot? Uh, it's getting close to time. Yeah. It's It's been a long time since that original. Um, you know, this will be, I don't often think this is the case, but if you're going to do a Back to the Future reboot, so key is going to be the casting. Like, who do you get as Doc? Who do you get as Marty? That, that the, the movie will be made, made or broken right there, right. I think. To, to capture, you don't don't do Michael J. Fox impersonation. Don't do a document. Bring, bring your own thing to it, but they got to have that larger than life personalities that they brought in that first one. Um, so I would be I would be okay with it. I, I still feel like give me a couple more years. Give me a couple more years, but then I think we'll be ready for it. I don't know what do you guys think. I was going to say no Huey Lewis in the news. Got to get get back in time because it's like that's from that trilogy. Yep. They have to get a brand new group to be part of this new trilogy and it is almost time that you can go back to the future to hip hop and just go that, just recast the entire thing and make it all about hip hop. I would just. You know, it's always been long enough that if you did a Back to the Future now, you could go back to the era that the original Back to the Future was made. I mean, so that would be kind sure. of a cute play like, on it. I would love to Amy see Rose? that. I like seeing Doc turn up in Sin City. That was cool. <laughs> um, I, you know, I do think that these films are in the classic territory. So my initial reaction is, really guys? 
But I do think because of the concept of being able to go in different parts of history, mm -hmm. that there are a lot of other elements they could explore. I do yeah. love that idea. So in this case, it's not such a flat linear story where you know they're just straight rebooting the same thing. There's actually fresh content that could be made from this. Mm -hmm. So I do think you're right. It's very pivotal to get the right right actors. Yeah. And if they do that and it's you know reinventing it in a unique way, I could come around. Yeah, it's got to be a reboot though, not a remake. Yes, that'd yeah. be very key. Plus. Yes. What car would it be? It wouldn't be a DeLorean. What would it be? Would it have to be a Prius. lemon? Prius. A Prius? <laughs> I'd make it a Prius. Right? Probably. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Jean Hernandez writes, from say hello to my little friend to laugh is like a box of chocolates, <laughs> what is your favorite movie quote? Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, I mean, there are a lot, of, a lot of great ones, but I'll, I'll just always fall back on mine. Uh, uh, Spaceballs. Uh, Dark Helmet and Lone Star are having their fight, and Dark Helmet has him at a disadvantage and says, Now, Lone Star, you will see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. <laughs> that that will always be my favorite movie quote. Anyway. I'll buy that for a dollar. Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. I always think of Don't Call Me Shirley. That's my first uh, one. Leslie Nielsen, that's Don't great. Call me or you, you gotta, hey, you looking at me? You look, what? What? You looking at me? What? What? You looking at me? Yeah. There's so many. Oh, There's yeah. So yeah. Many. I'll so, be back. So I am your father. I mean, <laughs> all right, let's take uh, two more quick ones. Okay, Matt Kalik's day writes, do you think with the awesome films dropping in 2016, would it be fair to say it may turn out to be the greatest year in cinema? It's, it's so hard. I mean, we had that discussion a lot about 2015 when Batman vs. Superman was still going to be that year, and there's one or two others Warcraft. that moved. Yeah, Warcraft, I think, moved out to 2016. And so there was some discussion. You're going to have Avengers 2, you're going to have Jurassic Park, you're going to have New Star Wars, you're going to have Batman vs. Superman, you're going to have War Warcraft. You're gonna, I mean, so there were some discussions. It's really tough to say until we get closer and we start seeing some stuff from these movies. Um, every year has the potential to be the greatest year of movies ever. Mm -hmm. um, I think 2015 is probably going to be the biggest box office uh, year in history. But how good will the films be? Don't real know yet, but we'll, we'll hang in there. But certainly 2016 has as good of a chance as any. Any other thoughts? Um, yeah, I just feel like it every f year we're like, oh my god, these are amazing. And it all also depends on what films do it for you. Because there's amazing indie art house films that released last year, which really took most of the Oscars. And then there's these big budget, amazing comic book films and all this. So I just feel like every year has something else to say. And a lot of it's reflected in the state of our world and the universe and everything. And a lot of that is you know, reflected in cinema and what people really yearn for. Um, so yeah, I think it, it all depends. But man, it's a great time to be a film fan because all these incredible films keep coming out. Yeah. I also use You're Killing Me Smalls a lot, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I think 2016 has just as much of a chance as 2015. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's so many films now that Guardians of the Galaxy, that'll, I think that's coming out in 16, right? Or is it 17? I think it's 17. Maybe 17 is the year, guys. I don't know. That's my all these years, they all sound great, so I can't really judge right now. I mean, 2014 has been a great year for movies. Yeah. I'm looking forward to all the films from next year and the following year. So, All right, one more really quick. All right, the Dinosaur King writes, what would it take for spoof and parody movies to be great again? For which movies to be great again? Spoof and parody. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, spoof and parody movies where you had... Hot Shots, Hot Shots Part Two. Uh, what was the one with Val Kilmer? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, uh, Top yeah. Secret. Top Secret. Yeah. You, uh, the Leslie, you know, the this uh, secret, not secret. Naked Gun. gun. Uh, Naked Gun film. Scary movie. What happened was Scary Movie ruined everything. Uh, I know, and I know some people really like the Scary Movie thing, but even if you like Scary Movie, it kind of started a new trend that went right like this. Mm. And then you got those two dudes who direct like you know, uh, Meet House the Spartans too. Right, and. Right. Like, it just all became crap. Spoof movies stopped being about good humor and good spoofing to let's just throw in, you know, pop cultural references, right. and that becomes funny. Pile it up. I mean, and they've just become pathetic. Yeah. It's going to take one really visionary filmmaker to do a spoof movie that is not just pop culture references and all this crap, get a really great comedy. It's going to take one to do it to show the studios and the audiences again, these can be great if you don't just make a pile of crap yeah. that appeals to the lowest common denominator and it'll make five million bucks. I, I, I don't know, what do you guys think? I can't agree yeah. with you more. I would say anyone who wants to write a spoof movie or a satire, Young Frankenstein, study that oh. film. Because that is one of the funniest films. I could watch that every year, and I do, and, and laugh my ass off. It is repeatedly funny, 
there are scenes that I could forever watch. And that's the sign of not only a classic film, but a classic spoof satire comedy. And that's a, and that's a perfect spoof satire. So watch that if you're writing something and use that as like the, the gauge. Pick a topic, stick to that topic, use the references from that topic. You know, that's a genre film. It's Frankenstein, also has the werewolf, Invisible Man. There's all these things you can hone in, but it's Frankenstein. So that's I, a good The aforementioned Spaceballs. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's still a lot of satirical films. I just feel like that line to where it becomes a spoof is different because, I mean, he hasn't made one in a while like that, but the Christopher Guest films are still very satirical. Mm -hmm. And um, Space Station 76 looks like it's going to be yes. that as well. And I still feel like there's a lot of films that have that satirical element to it, but they're not all the way across, like, the Top Gun and, and or Top Gun and, like, you know, that kind of element to it. It's not that extreme, but I do feel like a lot of films still have social commentary that are satirical. All right, folks, we are fresh out of Naked time. Done. Thank you so much for joining us here today on AMC Movie Talk. Listen, don't forget, lots of great films playing at AMC Theaters right now. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for your theater showtime and, of course, your movie ticket information. If you want an audio-only version of this episode, look in the description of this video and you'll find our podcast feed and click the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me. First of all, sitting to my immediate right, she's the host of AMC Indie Spotlight and of course our movie new senior editor, Miss Amy Rose Eisenbach. Amy Rose, where can people find you online? Yay! Thanks for all your support with AMC Indie Spotlight. We're having so much fun and a new episode is tomorrow and you can find me at Amy Rosie on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks. The one, the only writer, director, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, at John Schnepp, and at T-D-O-S-L-W-H. Uh, I'll see you guys later. And our lovely host today, Miss Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find you? Twitter, Instagram, at Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. Woo! And, of course, you can find me on all the various social media networks, just at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campia for AMC Movie News, and until tomorrow, bye-bye. Hey, everyone. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC movie talk show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.